You've heard the phrase, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, meaning that children end up acting a lot like their parents. This is true for the woman in today's story. Unfortunately, she didn't appreciate the kind and compassionate man her father had become, but instead looked back and imitated his old anger and bias toward everyone. So can something inherited be unlearned? Let's find out. Hello friends, welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. Yes, and that includes sound effects. I'm Timothy Gregory, bringing you the story of a woman, the daughter of the man in last week's episode, who looked back on his old racially charged rage and reckless behavior and, well, followed suit. He had a change in heart, but we'll see if her stubborn heart could be convinced of the same in today's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. Also, you'll want to stick around because later we're going to give the rest of you an opportunity to enter yet another sweepstakes drawing for a prize. No, it's not a cash prize, but it is a prize, and I think it's a prize that you are really going to like if we draw your name. But first, let's get to it, folks. The true story of Sarah Gonzalez. All that to say, I'm so glad you took me up on my dinner invitation, Sarah. I, I know you're busy with teaching, but it seems like I haven't seen you in months. I know, I just get caught up with work, and I have a lot of commitments. It hasn't been that long, Mom. Maybe a couple months? Either way, I'm thankful. I miss you. I knew you'd grow up fast, but I just wish we'd talk more often. We don't live that far away from each other. You have my phone number. You don't answer when I call. Yeah, well... I know things haven't been easy since Daddy died. You think? Watching him bleed to death as a six-year-old was not easy. Oh, sorry, honey. It's been tough for me, too, but we need to remember that we can trust God to Mom, help... Mom! I don't want to hear about how God is going to make everything better for me. What did God do for you? How has he helped you since Daddy died? When Sarah Gonzalez was born, her father Andy Gonzalez, an ex-con, had changed his life and was serving as a full-time chaplain at Cook County Jail. But when Sarah was six, her father died, and her life took a turn for the worse. This is the story of her rescue, the true story of Sarah Gonzalez, right now on Unshackled. In 1996, my family was in Bermuda on a family vacation. One morning, I opened the door of the hotel bathroom to see my father vomiting blood into the sink. He was dead within 48 hours. So, at the tender age of six, I took my stand. I vowed to never follow God again. Life without my dad's guidance was devastating, especially for mom. I, I just can't. I don't know if I can go on. <laughs> I remember thinking that if she died, I would need to kill myself. Mom hung on better than I did. By the time I was 12, I stopped going to church. It seemed weird for me to go since I'd been cursing God's name since my dad died. That whole period of my life felt like one big, deep well of sadness. Other than my mother, I had no family to fall back on. I did have a couple of friends. Pigeon and Mars. But they weren't interested in my well-being, or their own. This party is so much better than the one on Ashland. Right? At least here they've got brews and a nitrous tank. And they got some shady looking dudes hanging out here too. Yeah, what's with the teardrop tattoos? I think it means they've done time. Or killed someone. Hey, man, I used to see them on the guys that my dad would visit in prison. Yeah, he oh. Just be careful and up, we'll be fine. Oh no, man, wait! Get down! Keep your head down! Come on! Let's get out of here! Hurry! That was crazy! Just another Saturday night in El Barrio! But see, it shouldn't be brown people shooting brown people. Our real enemy is the white man. That's why we have to become militant activists. That's what my dad would say. You told me your dad was a Christian preacher. Later on he was. 
But before that, he was cool. Did your dad ever smoke weed? Not when I knew him. But he'd spend time in prison for trafficking heroin, so probably. Really? That sounds cool. I don't want to be what he turned into, though. But I like who he used to be. Does your mom ever talk about him? Like, you know, what he used to be like? She didn't know him then either. She's as square now as he ended up. I spent the rest of my teenage years in a haze of drugs and alcohol abuse. I graduated high school with a 1.2 grade point average. The only things I wanted to read were black feminist literature, which told me my core identity is found in my color and my sex, as opposed to my father Andy's core identity, which he found in Jesus Christ. This literature helped radicalize me against the perceived patriarchal white supremacist machine. I was taught to hate the United States and everything it stood for. Do you have everything you need, Sarah? Uh, I still worry about you. I'm fine, Mom. In fact, you're not going to believe this, but I'm going to college. I think I want to be a teacher. <laughs> really? Does that sound so strange? No. I just know how bad you wanted to get out of school before. I want to be able to influence young people now. Tell them the truth. <laughs> What truth is that? That the system is skewed against them? That we need to have a new revolution in this country if we're going to change anything? Sarah, I think we need a revival, not a revolution. Only Jesus can... Oh, please! Don't start with that again. You still think Jesus is going to change things? Some of us don't want to live in a Christian country. There are people all over the world who would love to have the protections we have here. In the Middle East, Christians are dying for... They their deserve it! They can believe what they want, but if they just keep their mouths shut... I don't understand where all this anger comes from. Your father showed love and always said My that father the... isn't here anymore! I don't want to hear what he had to say right now! My mom was heartbroken at how dead I was spiritually. She kept praying for me and asking others to pray as well. That turned out to be a good thing. See? I told you this shop would have those candles you were looking for. Oh, here they are. The ones with the saints. Nice. What are these? I've never seen them before. Those are charts and candles of Aztec deities. Yeah, isn't the Day of the Dead coming up soon? Aztec? Really? Oh, yeah, Sarah. They're an ancient culture way more advanced than they get credit for. Your friend knows what she's talking about. <laughs> My mom would say this is all demonic. Oh, no. These are all deities, not demons. We build an altar for the Day of the Dead, then pray to our ancestors. You could pray to your dad. I don't think I want to talk to him. If your father is passed on to the next world, he may have wisdom for you. I have all these candles with the saints. You can have both. Seriously, Sarah, this will go good with your African ritual beads. And my crystals? Ooh, and what about your horoscope stuff? Can't hurt to cover every base, right? My life became a mishmash of many forms of witchcraft. We never called it witchcraft, but that's what it was. I worshipped the moon and got deeper into the Aztec beliefs. To me, it seemed like a natural part of my Mexican heritage. By the age of 23, I was teaching English in Pilsen, on the southwest side of Chicago, which just happened to be right next to the Cook County Jail, where I used to go with my dad when I was a little girl. By night, I was involved in different actions protesting police. We were responsible for property damage and stirring up chaos in Chicago city streets, all under the facade of social justice. We called it our civic freedom to protest, but intermingled in our activism was the rampant practice of witchcraft. I hated America. I hated white people. I hated police. I viewed Christians as mindless sheep, and I hated any form of authority. Ultimately, my hate and my rebellion was against a holy God. Fortunately, the fact that I had a respectable job as a teacher kept me from doing anything too dumb. But there were drugs and alcohol. Sarah, you and Pigeon want to hit this bowl? Oh, I'm down. You know I ain't really into weed like that. It's boring. Makes me fall asleep. Oh yeah, like coke and binge drinking is any better. Or pills. Are you two really going to pressure me to smoke your dope? I know we've been friends since high school, but that's a little silly, isn't it? I figured since you work in a high school, it would be normal. We encourage our students to just say no. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I don't need any downers. I'm gonna stick to hooch. Which is a downer, Sarah. Well, it's been a long week. That's what I'm talking about. Here you go, Hermana. Yeah, why not? Wow, I can't remember the last time I saw you smoke. Sarah, <sighs> is something wrong? 
Sarah, what's going on, girl? Can you hear me? What is happening to me? I'm, I'm slipping away. I, I can see. I, She's oh, freaky. I can hold on. Sarah, come on, Sarah. Oh God, do you see it? Do you see it? It's, it's evil. Look at me, girl. Look at me. Oh, my heart's pounding. She's not kidding. Her heart is racing pitch, and we gotta call 911. Oh, she's tripping, but she's gonna be fine. She only took one hit. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. <laughs> it was only one hit. She just hasn't smoked in a while. She's just seeing stuff. My heart is exploding. Her heart is still pounding. <clears throat> oh, man, she probably took some pills before. This will be done in a minute. But it wasn't over in a minute. I couldn't tell my friends but I felt I was wrestling with a demon. I didn't understand it either, but I knew I was fighting with something evil, and it wanted control of me. I thought back to when I was a kid, and my dad would tell me to call on Jesus' name when I was frightened. Could I do that? I mean, I wasn't one of his followers. And my friends, I didn't want them to think I'd become a Christian. This is a bad trip, a long trip. Oh, my heart. Pounding. Look at me, Sarah. Look at me. Let me tell you. I'm scared. You don't need to be scared. You're having a spiritual awakening. Sarah, it's happening no. for you. No, no. It's okay. Just let it happen. No, no. Mm -mm. I still think it's a bad trip. I'm telling you, Pidge, this is just a... Cover me, Jesus. Cover me, Jesus. What? Are you singing? Cover me, Jesus. Is she singing to Jesus? Cover me, Jesus. Is this a joke, Sarah? No, what? It is not a joke. I was... I was being attacked. Attacked? By what? Or who? I... I don't know. But when I started singing, it, it went away. Honey, I think you should lay off the dope. Hey, I know a song we could sing. It's an old folk song, un canto. You need to stop, Mars. I'm trying to help you. I know you're trying, but it's not helping. Cover me, Jesus. Cover you need to open your mind, girl. Mars, I know you think you're doing something good, but you're not. I'm the one going through this. I am. Whatever. You... Yeah, okay, just keep singing your Jesus songs. Cover me, Jesus. Don't go, Cover Mars. Me, I'm out of here. Cover me, Jesus. I don't think she's coming back, Sarah. Cover me, Jesus. Folks, we'll get back to Sarah's story in just a moment. But first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 73rd year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link if there's one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org, and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check, Unshackled, we take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now, let's get back to Sarah's story. I wrapped, my, I wrapped myself up in my cobija, a big Mexican blanket, and continued singing, Cover Me, Jesus. It was around 3 a.m. when I got another idea. What are you doing? You should stay in bed. I need to talk to my mom. She'll know what to do. Girl, she's asleep, Sarah. You should try to sleep, too. You're tripping. I need to talk to my mom. Answer it, mom. She's gonna be sleeping. I need my mom. Go back to sleep, hermana. I fell asleep, feeling pretty worn out from the whole experience. When I woke up the next morning, Mars had returned. Girl, what happened to you? You were tripping 
bad. It was weird. My mind was racing, and it felt like this never-ending spiral where my mind kept dropping into a deep pit, only to drop again, and again, and again. It was pretty bad. Sounds to me like you were having a panic attack. I don't know. Maybe. I thought I called my mom last night. It was weird. You did call your mom. It was like around 3 a.m. No way. Check your phone home, girl. You called her. Wow. I did call her. You were messed up. It was only one hit. You sure tripped me out. <sighs> yeah. Sorry about all that. I I'll get some help this week and try and find out what happened. It probably was a panic attack. I counseled with several people. Some friends, a school counselor who I worked with. We all settled on the idea that what I experienced was just a bad trip, which then triggered a panic attack but that didn't make me feel any better. I started chain smoking and I got really paranoid. I mean, what if this happened again? What if it happened while I'm teaching? Was I losing it? The paranoia was beating me up. Two months later, in the summer, I went to Los Angeles where my dad was from. I was into the low riding car scene and I was hoping to see my grandma on some cool rides. I found a car club called Ponte Trucha in a magazine and I thought they might be fun to hook up with. I had noticed that one of their sweatshirts said Mark 836. I knew that was a Bible verse, which I thought was weird. When I contacted them on Instagram, one of them even invited me to their church. I politely declined. The next morning was Sunday. I went to visit my grandma in her nursing home. Well, I noticed that her nursing home seemed to be right next to the church that I had been invited to. So, I went on in. It turns out the service was close to starting. Then I saw one of the guys from the magazine article standing on stage with a guitar. So I struck up a conversation. His name was... Hernan. My name is Hernan. I'm Sarah. Hi, Sarah. I'm the guy that invited you here today. Oh, and that's my wife, Carla, over there. Hi. Yeah, I wasn't planning on coming today. You said... I'm kind of done with God and churches. Ah, yeah, lots of that going around, huh? My dad was a prison preacher. Then he died and I lost interest. I'm sorry about your dad. Is there anything you wanted to talk about? I wanted to talk about cars, but we ended up talking about faith mostly, or my lack of it. I told he and his wife my objections to Christianity, and they listened patiently. After a while, it was time for me to go. Hernan had one more thing to say to me before I left. God is on your trail, Sarah. It's just a matter of time. I left thinking, well, that was cool but it's time to get back to real life. A couple weeks later, I was given a chance to go to the other coast. How'd you like to come with me to New York City? Sure, Pigeon, but why? I got a modeling gig. They say it's gonna be on the cover of National Geographic. Is it an issue of evolution or something? <laughs> ha ha, no, it's about the gender revolution. There's gonna be a bunch of us. Okay. It's gonna be a free stay in a fancy hotel, Sarah, and National Geographic is gonna pay for it all. It could be pretty swanky. I don't see how I could pass that up. We flew to New York that August and got set up in the nicest place I ever stayed. That afternoon, Pigeon's friend Kiki showed up and invited us to the pool on the roof. Kiki was a famous international model, the kind that doesn't mind spending a lot of money. <laughs> I have never had champagne like this before. How much is a bottle of this? I don't even know. A thousand or so? You'll find out when you get the bill. This is our fifth bottle? They're not bottles, they're magnums. Sure, okay. And what's the point of working so hard if you can't spend the money? <laughs> yeah, I guess. What do you do, Sarah? I'm a teacher. And how much do you make as a teacher? Kiki! Not enough. Well, I don't ever want to have to say that. Not all of us are cut out to be models. And let's hope it stays that way. <laughs> I remember thinking how bored I was by Kiki, but that I'd gladly drink thousands of dollars worth of alcohol on her dime. Pigeon and I had planned to go out and explore the nightlife, but as usual, things turned out differently. Ooh, you don't look good, Sarah. Too much thousand dollar champagne. Oh, uh, I'm feeling a bit nauseous. Looks like we're not going dancing tonight. Oh, not me. I just need some rest. Something's not right. 
girl, that's okay. If we don't go out tonight, maybe we can at least have a fun day tomorrow. Yeah, I'd like to. Tomorrow. We got back to the hotel, but I was restless. Pigeon was asleep in her bed, but my heart was racing. I could feel it happening again. That feeling I had of losing it. I remember tossing and turning and suddenly opening my eyes and seeing Pigeon's face shapeshift into something evil and demonic. I got out of bed to throw water on my face in the bathroom. I remember thinking, here I was in this expensive, fancy hotel, paid for by some big company, and I'm losing my mind. I remember looking into my eyes in the mirror, searching for some type of understanding. My mind continued to spin, but I got back into bed, and finally I fell asleep. I woke up early to a text from my mom. The Lord woke me up to earnestly pray for you. There is deliverance in Jesus' name. I'm sure she expected me to roll my eyes at that text, like I usually did. But this time, she and God had my attention. I knew I needed to talk to her. Sarah, are you okay? Why would you think I'm not? Well, you haven't called me in a, in a long time. And last night... What about last night? I don't know what you're into, but the Lord showed me that the devil wants you dead. And he had me pray for you. John chapter 10, verse 10, and Psalm 69. What are those verses? John chapter 10, verse 10 says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Yeah, I've forgotten that. Psalm 69 is about someone who is going through a rough patch. The writer says, Deliver me out of the mire, and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me, and out of the deep waters. Let not the water flood overflow me, neither let the deep swallow me up, and let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. That's how I feel right now. I had a... A bad experience. I feel like the devil was attacking me all night. Oh, he probably was, honey. Satan doesn't want what's best for you. He's trying to kill and destroy. Why would he even think I'm a threat? I'm not living like a Christian. I don't know for sure, Sarah. But when you were just a little girl and you went with your daddy into the prisons to speak to the convicts there, he said that someday you would be the one speaking in prisons. You would be the one working to change prisoners' lives. Why would Dad say that? Maybe God gave him a vision of your future. I don't know, Mom. I can believe you're confused right now. But you're going to have to make a decision sometime. Maybe soon. Who are you going to follow, Sarah? I knew she was right. But I couldn't figure things out in that room where I'd been attacked a few hours ago and where my homegirl was asleep in her bed across the room. I knew what Pigeon would say if I told her I was thinking about Christian stuff. She would tell me to forget it. I went down to the hotel lobby where there was a small cafe. I sat there trying to get my bearings. And then, like a strong wind in my face, it just hit me. Jesus is God. The Bible is true. None can be added or subtracted to it. I'm a sinner. God loves me. I have rejected him, and yet he has pursued me. He is holy, and I have profaned his name. Just like that, the Holy Spirit revealed these truths to me, and I knew my mama and all the other people praying for me hadn't been wasting their time. I didn't pray a fancy prayer. I just said, God, I believe. I know I'm wrong and you are right. Take my life. That was August 16th, 2016. A couple weeks later, school started back up and I met my new students. One of them was a kid named Carlos. He was in a gang and he had a lot of attitude. Time is tough, Miss Gonzalez. I gotta be tough too. You can be. Strong and safe at the same time. You don't have to be in gangs to be strong. What difference does it make? I can still get shot even if I ain't in a gang. I know. 
See those four empty chairs? They used to have four students sitting in them. See what I mean? Carlos, you don't have to be in gangs to be strong. You tell me you're a child of the devil? That you do the devil's work? So? So? Jesus came. Jesus came to set people free. He did, huh? I was able to tell Carlos and a whole bunch of other kids about Jesus and how he could save them. It was amazing. For the first time, I had an answer to all their questions about life. Even more amazing is that the school never shut me down. I had a great opportunity to tell kids about Jesus. But crazier than that, I now work with an outreach group that goes to DuPage County Jail and speaks to the inmates there, just like my daddy said I would. How does that happen? Only God does that. Sarah Gonzalez has been active as a speaker and spreader of the word in the Chicago area since turning her life over to Christ. She works on worship and media teams at her church and is now director of Cook County Jail Ministries and the women's chaplain. Listening friend, is something missing in your life? Do you need a change, a transformation? God is indeed doing an amazing thing in the world. He loves you so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for your sins. There is nothing you have ever done that can't be forgiven. That's how powerful God's grace is. Are you ready to surrender your life to Jesus and ask his forgiveness? If you need help in making this crucial decision, we encourage you to call 1-888-NEED-HIM or you can get in touch with us here at Pacific Garden Mission. 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Now, we love hearing from our listeners here on the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, so send us your questions and we'll answer them here. It can be something you're curious about or just something you want to share with us. All you have to do is write us at podcast at unshackled.org or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We'd love to hear from you. Now, before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can even share it or tell a friend. We'd also love for you to review or rate our podcast, and don't forget to check out our other podcasts on this same platform, Unshackled Daily Devotionals and Unshackled In Person. We appreciate your input and involvement in our ministry. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. All right, the new prize for this sweepstakes contest is yet another beautiful wooden scripture plaque. The verse on this one is Lamentations 521. Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. This plaque is... Well, beautiful. The deep brown bark complements the light brown rings where this plaque is written. It's also carved into almost the shape of a heart. If you'd like a peek at this scripture plaque, you're welcome to visit our podcast website, unshackledpodcast.org, and stop by the audio drama page for a picture. Unfortunately, we are only able to mail this plaque to locations within the United States, so our drawing is limited to U.S. addresses, but if you reside in the U.S., all you have to do to enter our sweepstakes drawing is call 312-281-1264 or email podcast at unshackled.org and give us your name, phone number, and email. That's your name, your phone number, and email. Next week is the last week to enter the sweepstakes, so be sure to get your entries in, folks. The deadline to enter the drawing will be June 3rd, and we will announce the winner on June 19th. We look forward to hearing from you. And next time... Daddy, we're going to be baptized. You what? We're going to be baptized in the river. June, are you out of your mind? Gail Evans hoped his family going overboard with religion was just a phase. I don't want my kids growing up to be fanatics like the ones I used to see down home in West Virginia when I was a boy. 
one he certainly wouldn't allow himself to be pulled into. If I believe Jesus is alive as you say he is, I'd have to quit my job and preach Christ. Hope you enjoy your out-of-date customs. You won't catch me taking communion. But facing God in the stillness would test his resolve. With my gift of gab and my experience as a salesman, I ought to be able to preach as well or better than most of these ministers. God has said that... Th th Find out what happens as we bring you the classic true story of Gail and Alice Evans on the next Unshackled. Heard in the true story of Sarah Gonzalez were Amanda Markeski, Anna Maria Alvarez, Antonia Arsely, Chaz Campbell, and Demetrius Troy. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Demetrius Troy. Sound assistant, Holly Krajewski. Recording and audio engineer, David Pierczynski. Script, Darby Kern. That's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ. <laughs>